Welcome to Gamer Protocol Network News, where we give you a little look into the world of gaming. I'm Yo Fario. I'm Seth Meister. Today, we will bring you the close-up as to what's happening in the gaming community, along with info of some new games coming out this year and forward. We are trying something new today, as you can see. Instead of being in person, we're doing it in a podcastish style. Once the video's done, we'd like you to tell us which version you prefer. Us standing in person in front of a camera, or us doing it over... Uh, call here so yeah so our first topic for today is the persona 5 u.s release date it has been confirmed for valentine's day in february of 2017 but we still have not revealed any info on the europe release along with that we're just going to tell you a little bit more as to what's happening in persona 5 so in this little update we get some more details on as to what the story dungeons and more you know is going to be we uh, gained some info as to how this protagonist became what he was. So ex basically what happened was this boy, this protagonist, who was moving into the city for the first time, I think it's Tokyo, uh, he witnesses a man harassing a woman. So what he does is he intervenes and he beats the living hell out of this person. And basically, because he intervened, he was arrested. Something happened as, like, so he was transported into a blue prison, which is the Velvet Room. And this is what I'm getting from the news story thing here. Um, which, he was summoned by Igor, basically, you know. If you've played any of the other Persona games, Igor is this long-nosed, big-eyed freak guy. <laughs> uh, he basically, he tells you sort of your future, but in a vague sense. And he'll also sort of help you on the way, you know. <laughs> But uh, he's given a chance to rehabilitate himself to freedom. And that is the only way to avoid ruin in this, like, future that he is, that Igor has perceived for him. So, yeah, they give us a lot of new screenshots, um, as we can show you right here. And they just kind of show off the art style, all, like, the different sort of game mechanics. I can't really say they're game mechanics, but... Just give us a look as to how the game is going to look, how the game is going to be. Moving on to Microsoft, uh, they have plans to release a new update for the Xbox One, and it will allow you to have Windows Store apps on your Xbox One, which is cool. Um, but you're not allowed to have any Windows Store games, which is a little weird. Um, when uh, they were asked about it, it seemed they really didn't have any definite reason as to why they didn't have games on there, other than just... Uh, Microsoft wanting to control the game market or something like that, something crazy. So, I mean, what, what do you think of this? Uh, stuff? It seems kind of weird why they would allow apps on Xbox One but not the games. Because, I mean, who's going to go on their Xbox One like, hey, I'm going to type up some stuff on Word here on my Xbox, or I'm going to make myself a presentation. It doesn't make sense. I, yeah, yeah, that's true. So, in other news, more relating to games, uh, cheaters in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege and Tom Clancy's The Division now are receiving first defense punishments of permaban. So, basically, in the story, what it says is these people that have been cheating, they originally used to get a, used to get a uh, temporary suspension of about two weeks, you know, and that, that was just to show them that they were doing wrong, and obviously it wasn't working enough, and people kept on cheating. So... Now, anyone that's been cheating in these games have a uh, permaban. It, it was a code of conduct, conduct that was updated, and uh, now it's got maximum penalty, ban on first offense, like I said in the title. And it's, it's the hackers and cheaters' fault for this coming upon us. There, you know, it's just yeah. I mean, like, why, why are you even doing it? Come on, come on. If you're still doing this, I guess stop. <laughs> unless, unless you want to lose all your stuff. Then. Yeah, it's just not worth it, man. It's honestly not. It's a game. Cheating cheating never makes the game fun. Yeah, yeah. The kind of person you are, but... So under your Call of Duty news, uh, Infinite Warfare is at a all-time low for pre-order sales. Um, around this time last year, Black Ops 3 had around... 700,000 pre-orders and Infinite Warfare 
right now it has 60,000. So, you know, it's, it's actually nice to see because sort of we're at a place where game developers have been doing sort of what they wanted for a while. And, you know, maybe we're about to change all that. So we'll see what happens. Um, any comments? Uh, I just think it's about time that they kind of met their maker in a way. Because they have been spewing these games out of their butt for the past how many years? Just every year they've been bringing out a new one. And up to about Advanced Warfare, well, aside from Black Ops 3, I'd say up to about Advanced Warfare that stopped getting good. So, I don't know. Yeah. Change. Not even, maybe even Ghosts. Maybe it, it started getting bad at Ghosts, I'd say, actually. They, they really messed up. Yeah, not listening to the community that much, definitely. So they don't really need to, you know. Except yeah. now they do. All right. Hopefully, they have, they have all this money. I did hear someone talking about like, what if they like made a really good push at E3 though, and then a bunch of people decided to pre-order. That that's a possibility still. We'll see after E3, I guess. That's the big number. Yeah. So. So on to something a little more exciting, uh, Battlefront 3 has been basically confirmed. Um, last month, a group of Russian Star Wars fans started uh, developing the never-released Battlefront 3 um, that was discontinued basically when Disney bought Star Wars or something like that, something along the lines of that. Somebody buying the Star Wars, like, rights. And, uh, but anyway, so it's, it was renamed to Galaxy and Turmoil. Um, they actually just took the Star Wars off of it. Um, so hopefully they can get past, you know, some trademark and copyright issues, but, eh, I, I feel like, yeah, you, know, you know, Disney's going to be coming at them. EA. Yeah. yeah. They're like, Disney is the reason why, like the old, I think it's like the oldest copyright is still in existence. Like Mickey Mouse. Like they, they are the ones who keep <laughs> extending the copyright right so that they can make sure they keep them. So, I, I have a feeling that if this uh, gets enough backup from the fans, that EA and Disney might actually have to cave in. To, I don't know, just and the, sure, like that. Once this comes out, all the Battlefront DLC sales that EA has been spewing out, those will. Well, I know, I know it will definitely come out, um, not necessarily on the Steam store or anything, but I mean, Halo Online um, was something that you know some Russian developers did, where they basically made Halo Three for the PC, like just multiplayer, and that you know you can go and play that right now if you want, but it's it's like not officially anywhere. Um, but I, the article uh, that I got this from was saying that um, they're not making money from it; it's going to be free. But it was sort of like su suggesting that that's the reason why they're not going to get anybody to come after them. But that's that's not true. That's that's not yeah. true at all. It doesn't matter if you make money. So on to some of your Steam Summer Sale news. Um, it's been basically confirmed um, that the Steam Summer Sale is going to be from June 23rd to July 4th. Um, so, you know, if you're saving up your money, you're going to be able to spend it soon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, basically, uh, the Mr. Freeman... The Reddit user, Mr. Freeman BBQ, um, he actually reported, like, leaked to that, what the Steam sale was. Uh, the last one, was it, uh, was it the winter sale? I don't know. I think it's the winter sale. Probably. And, uh, yeah, so, we basically confirmed, not 100%, but you, you can expect it. So, in more news with Bethesda, as you saw in the last episode, uh, there is a possible new Elder Scrolls game coming out. There's also another chance for a possible remaster of The Elder Scrolls V. And, uh, kind of disappointing, <laughs> Bethesda. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, I just, no. I don't want to see that happen. That We don't need another one. That game is perfectly fine on PC, and the previous gen consoles were okay. Yeah, I mean, the only thing the only thing they could sell me on if they remastered this is, like, some co-op. Like, me and just a friend well, being able be to amazing. go around Skyrim and just slaughter things. That'd be, if that if that was added, then... You know. Yeah, they do have, like, mods that allow you to do that, but it's not, like, completely, like, um, perfect. 
Like, mm. you, you can actually, though, you can have, like, a controller plugged in, and, like, you and a friend do some stuff. I've yet to try it, but apparently it is the thing. But again, an actual version of it, like, you know, a full, you know, multiplayer support, you know, you're just playing with a friend somewhere. They're just in the world doing their thing, maybe, even. That would be cool. Uh, but then again, uh, what if they were to actually, uh, they don't remaster Skyrim. What if they remaster one of the older games, like some of the, you know, old, like, DOS box, like uh, Arena, and Daggerfall, something like that. What do you think? Maybe uh, New Morrowind. Kind of like what's in development now, sort of, uh, is the Skywind, where they're taking the Skyrim engine with the Morrowind game, basically. Yeah, I mean, the graphics in that game haven't aged too well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a little it's a little confusing, like, just because of the graphics. Like, it's, it's hard to explain, but, like, as you're playing the game, it's almost, like, overwhelming because it's just, mm -hmm. like, things don't look right. <laughs> I'd say the most perfect thing in Morrowind, though, in terms of visual, is the water. Yeah. Water's <laughs> the best part of that game. <laughs> but, in all honesty, if they were to remake Morrowind in a better engine, you know, it would be so much more playable. It would have so much more value. I mean, there's those people that are into the retro, older games, but sometimes that's not what you need. You know, they could add better voice actors, because I think there were only, a, like, a couple voice actors for that game, weren't there? There's, like... 10 maybe more yeah well, i mean they didn't really you know they haven't shown light on the older games there yeah if they're gonna but if they're gonna be trying to like they'll probably have to like you know recreate you know all the assets and everything and re basically recreate the entire game like they might as well just make <laughs> another one at that point yeah i mean it would be cool six it would be cool <laughs> though it would be cool Maybe, like, in the lull after... Well, I could see them using it to generate hype for the next one. Yeah. But I, I feel like people would welcome that. I feel like the Elder Scrolls community would like that. If they have, like, if they, if they manage to have all of them, and they're like, okay, we're developing the next one, here you go, take this, sort of, like, hold you off over until then. Sort of like they did with, the, with Fallout 4, actually. They released the... It wasn't remasters, but it was like a collection of all the old yeah. Fallout games you could buy in the mini nukes. They also did that with um, Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection so. for four. They, you know, they got us excited. So they gave like, us the first three games right on one disc. Yeah, so it could be like, it may be incorrect information, like he meant, he said remaster, but maybe he meant, you know, like a collection sort of thing. Uh, That'd be a like lot that. of data to put on one disc. I'm assuming, at least, because well, Marwin, Marwin isn't even a gig. But then we have Oblivion, where that's... I'm, they might not do Oblivion, though, because that's almost, like, too recent. I'm thinking Marwin and before. I like Arena and Daggerfall. Because, yeah, uh, yeah, Oblivion's almost like... I mean, I can still go play that on, like, you know, whatever I want to. Like, it's not... Like, if you're looking at, like, um, like, yeah, especially Arena and Daggerfall, that's, like, that's dated. <laughs> that is dated. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I, it is in, it's in DOSBox, which is weird. I, I'm not a fan. I don't know why people like that so much, but I'm gonna get so much hate in the comments for saying that, but, <laughs> uh, I tried playing some games in there, it's just, eh, not fun. Yeah, Bethesda, they... Should probably just stick with an Elder Scrolls Six, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, it's. I don't even care if it doesn't come out this year. It should. If they if they can do both, if they can do if they already had this like they, if they were like maybe they were like working on this for while they're doing everything else like as they're developing Fallout, they are already working on all this, and now it just happened to finish, and you know they're ready to release this, but they had been working on you know Elder Scrolls for how long too? Maybe they mm -hmm. just have a separate team working on this. I don't know how it works. They should. They should just split it up because that's all Bethesda is now: is Fallout and Elder Scrolls. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys got Doom, and uh, so make that Fallout <laughs> Dishonored. Slash Doom Dishonored. Then... Dishonored. Oh, okay. Too. All right. Well, <laughs> Dishonored doesn't have as much of a fan base as Dishonored is a Fallout. good game. Okay. Just, I, but except, it, except just... the thing about Dishonored though is that like Corvo was like he didn't talk at all, so it was like you know, <laughs> so. 
in the beginning, spoilers, I guess it's like the first 10 minutes of the game though. So basically uh, the, the like this princess's mother, you know, the queen, I guess, I, I believe that she's the queen. And she gets, she gets slaughtered like right in front of her. And Corvo's just like, oh, come here. No, no words at all. Like he just it's like seems like he just doesn't care about anything. But, so yeah, I'm hoping it's all voice acting design too, that'd be cool. And you know, seems like seems like it's gonna be good. I liked how they did it in Skyrim though, where you yourself are pretty silent, but you know, you speak through text and Yeah, like Corvo doesn't in... talk at all. He just <laughs> kills people and I guess I didn't kill anyone. I was doing like a peaceful playthrough and that was hard. I, bet. I, mean, I was doing a peaceful, non-like ability playthrough. <laughs> yeah, well, that wouldn't be too hard in Skyrim. <laughs> just you could just main an illusion magic and then make well, it. Well, yeah, you wouldn't be able to use illusion though. You wouldn't be able to use illusion. True. What about potions? I think you could use potions. I think that'd be equivalent. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> now that we've drifted off topic as to what. Bethesda is announcing at E3 this year. Uh, I think it's a good time to uh, close up our beautiful thing. Uh, like we said in the beginning, uh, we want your feedback. So tell us if you would like us in person, you know, sitting in front of a table telling you what's what, or us on this Skype call telling you what's what. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Thanks for watching.